Good morning, Bible Revival. Um, have you ever waited, like in the doctor's office, you had the waiting room, and it seemed like a long time, and then you got to see the doctor, which is the key? It's almost like our life right now is we're in the waiting room, waiting to see the Father. So today I wrote a note, life's most difficult lesson. So here's our most difficult lesson in life, learning to confidently wait for the Lord. Now that we're believers and we're following the Lord each day, we're reading his word, we want to be confident in our waiting room, which is our life right now. So Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord and your heart take courage. Courage is confidence, strength, ability, all the, all the positives. So wait for the Lord and heart take courage for the life's most difficult lesson, which is waiting for the Lord. He's going to use you. Isn't that great? So remain in the present circumstance that you're at until he gives you and he'll give you instruction. So there'll be a stillness of spirit in your heart throughout your day. You're not ready yet. And then he'll go click because we have to clear out some sin. So he's getting you ready. Imagine you're going to be his utensil, that golden utensil in the drawer. So he's trying to sharpen your skills. He's preparing me for a plan that's good for you and great for him. Isn't it marvelous? Of course, you go through the world, your daily activities, but he's first. That's just a means to put food on the table, help your neighbor. But the real goal is your your responsibility with your talent to serve him and then when you go see the doctor of course of course the father in heaven it'll be a very rewarding experience so rest don't rush around and just believe and watch his intervention and his direction now i'm going to give you some now does you could get your pencil out if you rewind this to watch it again but listen to the message and then write down these psalm verses, lamentations, and um, here's some of them. Psalm 40, verse 1, he promises to hear and answer you. So we're waiting, he promises. Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5, he'll give you clear instruction to follow his path. Lamentations, like I said, 325, remain in his will. Don't run in your direction. Remain in his will. Isaiah 40, 31, strengthen me when I'm quiet. He'll strengthen you when you're silent. So be still before the Lord, especially when you pray. Actively listen for his voice. It could be a whisper. And he'll give you the power and then he'll speak. He speaks finally and gives you the strength to do what he says. The result of all this waiting and learning and listening is joy and confidence. It's in, it's in his timing. You know, Moses, Abraham, these people were old. They, they, they got their message when they were, um, you know, at a ripe age. But he saw the goodness. He saw their faith. Isaiah 49, 23 those who wait for me will never be put to shame. There's that waiting, that word waiting room. Uh, so Isaiah, wait on faith. Isaiah 30, 15, 21. Where is our strength found? When we're alone, when we're quiet, and when we're listening. It gives you a place of hope in Psalm 130, verse 5. So keep his word, and uh, in Romans, now in the New Testament, Romans 15, 13, you'll see the benefits of all your waiting, all your hope, and through power and strength. So that's where we're at. We're in God's waiting room, which is our life, and then we're going to go see the doctor, which is the Lord. I chose this today because we're having a big storm down here in Florida, out in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm kind of wired about it. As long as I'm safe, I like to see the fury of nature from a distance over the over the um, tropical setting. So uh, I'll be safe. I hope I don't get hit with the tsunami. And uh, 
Remember, be patient in those verses. Go back and write them down. He has a mission for you. Okay. Oh, wait, the doctor wants to see me soon. Take care. Bye.